Hello, everyone. Welcome to another Facebook Live. I'm Marcia Baker, and I'm really excited that you are here with me. So just uh, be sure and just leave me a comment that you're here, um, and we'll get started. So today, we're going to need a few supplies. We're going to work on some Mother's Day things. We've got a lot to share with you today, so I'm going to kind of get going. But um, so we need uh, some scissors, and hopefully you have the printable. Where did that go? Um, I just posted that. So this is the Mother's Day printable. We're going to make a little gift box. So hopefully you have that, and it'd be great if you could print that out on cardstock. Hey, Lorraine, how are you? Hey, since I'm here, you know what? I didn't get your birthday card in the mail, so happy birthday, Lorraine. I know your birthday is tomorrow, so um, there's my birthday card. So I'll pop in the mail today, but just want to let you know I was thinking about you. I hope you have an amazing birthday. Um, anyway, so that's my little... Anyway. I love doing things with letters, and we're going to do some more things with letters today. But anyway, so happy birthday. So, all right, back to supplies. So we need a paper punch. Um, I'm going to just use a regular pen or just a regular Sharpie pen. It's fine. I'm probably going to use a bit, bit thicker pen. If you have a thicker pen, it might be helpful for our Mother's Day card. Um, some scissors and some ribbon. This is just the, the party ribbon, but if you have cloth ribbon, you could certainly use that. Um, I went ahead and cut this like 24 inches, and that might be a little long. So um, you don't probably need one that long, but if you wanted to be able to hang it, um, I think that could be helpful. So, hey, Joan, how are you? Glad you're with us. That's awesome. So, uh, so anyway, I just want to cover a couple of things to let a few more people get on. So um, anyway, let's see. Back to me. Hey, how you doing? Okay. Um, so I wanted to just actually, I want to go do this thing. I'm going to share my screen. Um, I just thought I'd do the 100 Day Project. I know a lot of you are doing it. I'm very excited. And Richard, I love what he's doing with them, um, doing like a Bible scene every day. I would love to get a hold of that Bible that he's using. Um, I've never heard of Annie Valaton, I think that's the name of the lady that's actually doing the illustrations. But anyway, would love to uh, be able to do that. But anyway, so, wow, 100 days of something this um, ambitious. This was an ambitious project. So um, day 19 was uh, Science Day because it was DNA Day. So I drew um, DNA and all that happy business. And then day 20, um, I just decided to do makeup and girly girl things. Uh, day 21, I did mail icons. So, you know, I could just definitely see a lot of these all having um, avocations in our sermon sketch notes. If we need to send a message or talking about a message or communicating, uh, mail icons would be great for that. Um, I don't do machines very well, so I sort of forced myself to do a car day. So obviously you can see I kind of messed up the wheels there, but I need a lot more practice. But um, that's okay. At least I can do a basic car if I need to. So um, there's my cars. And let's see, this was kitchen essentials. So pretty much I didn't do any food here as much as I just did uh, tools. And the oven and the refrigerator, stock pot, and so on. There's my blender, my measuring cups, so on. Uh, but, you know, um, the more visual vocabulary we have, or the more things we have in our visual vocabulary, the better off uh, we are when we sketch note. So I did medical icons on the um, April 30th, and then... Let's see, I think May 1st was Space Day. So uh, there's all my little space icons. And May 2nd was National Herb Day. So I drew all kinds of little herbs. And I found this little stencil circle, so I decided to put them all in this little stencil. So anyway, uh, there's herbs. And then people, you obviously can't have too many scenarios of people moving and walking and you know stepping in a puddle walking in a cane so playing soccer just um you know i just search pinterest and find little 
interesting characters and just redraw them. So it's just great to imitate until we're ready to move out on our own. Uh, May the 4th. So with Star Wars Day, may the 4th be with you. So I'm not sure a lot of people got that little pun, but that was Star Wars Day. And then on the 5th was Cinco de Mayo. And of course, our favorite little restaurant is closed right now. So that makes me sad, but I definitely have a craving for Mexican. So but that was a fun day to do. I think Mexican art is just so bright and just really delightful. So, all right crowns. I just decided to do a whole page of crowns. Not really sure what possessed me to do that, but I did. And then there's Facebook Live and then cactus. I mean, you see cactus everywhere. Um, anyway, kind of going uphill, but anyway, I just had a really fun time just drawing all the little cactus and it could just be a little embellishment on the, you know, how oh, if I've got a little inch here, what can I do? You can draw a little cactus uh, on the bottom of your sketch notes. And then today is monsters. I don't know what possessed me to do monsters, but you know, there's all kinds of scary things. So it's probably good to have a couple of monsters in your, in your back pocket. So, all right, let me jump back over. Um, and then the other thing that I wanted to share, um, let's see, there I am. All right. Um, so, hey, Linda, welcome. So glad you guys are here. So awesome. So the other thing I wanted to share is um, I know that you all, a lot of you completed a survey and I just really wanted to thank you for that. And I wanted to just share those results of that survey. So I'm going to just zip it back over here. There you go. And it was interesting. So basically I asked you, did you want more sketchnoting tips? Did you want to learn to draw more icons? Just doodle elements, you know, just the spirals, circles and such and faith art journaling. And it's just kind of amazing to me that I just thought that if I would have predicted anything, I would have thought that the sketch noting tips would be way out here and everything else would be lower, but um, we're kind of equally divided. So that really helps me figure out what the content that I'm going to produce in the future. And then your comments that you've also left me about your struggles really helps me trying to figure out um, the blog post that I can post to kind of help you over some of those challenges. So I really, really appreciate everybody's taking the time to respond on that survey. That was very helpful. So, oh, there I am back. All right. All right. Um, let's see. <laughs> you love the monsters. All right. Thanks, Lorraine. Appreciate that. So, hey, Joan. Welcome. Welcome. So, uh, so anyway, so today, let's see, I'm going to give it a couple more minutes to uh, let a couple more people jump on, um, but I want to just, I have a, let's see, I just want to make sure I stay on schedule here. So, um, I have a, a sermon that I sketched, and let's see, there we go, nope, oh, there we go, um, and uh, I just thought maybe I'd critique it to just let you know what I th think is working and that isn't. So, um, so here we go. So, um, so that this was the church that my my son goes to, and um, I was just on Facebook, and they popped up live, and I thought, oh, I should just you know, sketch note this. So I did. And uh, so he actually, he's actually going through the fruits of the spirit and this is the second week. Um, and uh, so it's, and, and he loves using the term being, being an effervescent Christian, being bubbly, being, um, you know, making us more attractive. And he actually started it with a um, shaking up a bottle of Coke and letting it explode. So that was kind of fun. But um, I just thought this was so fun to be able to take the title and kind of give it um, give it an image, you know, kind of make it a little bubbly. So, uh, you know, when you have the opportunity to do that, I mean, and it's fine if you don't have that vision right then, you can just kind of take a pencil and or just write the letters in in pencil, and then you can go back later and figure out how to, to illustrate a word, if that makes sense. And uh, another technique I like to do, if it's two words, is just then just kind of take and... Um, write it in cursive over here on the side. So, um, 
So the thing that overall on this sketch note is I kind of started out here and I left a lot of space, you know, so I've got some nice, um, very eye-catching bullets here and I left a lot of space and then he got into his message and you can just see how crowded everything is. See, I wish I would have um, maybe used only half of the space and then I think, because I don't think I got all the points down here. Um, and so that was just very frustrating. It's like just trying to write really tiny and it didn't really um, leave me any room for any any visuals. So that was just, you know, and it's sort of, I mean, yes, I could go back and do it, but it's just, you just never know what you're going to get when you're trying to sketch note somebody live. I could have gone to a second page. I try not to do that. I try and keep everything to one page, you know, so maybe I would have made these smaller. And of course, you know, again, inevitably had I done that, then, then they would have ended there and then it would have had all this space open. So you just can never predict and you just, and then really the whole point is, are you capturing what's being said, you know, and I think down here, I really got rushed and I really got crowded, which maybe I didn't catch all the points. So that was just, so probably it'd been better if I just flipped it over and used the other side. And, um, you know, I like to publish my sermon sketch notes, but it's probably more important that you get what you get, get the concepts versus uh, just making it pretty. So, and then I kind of a couple, sorry, easy for me to say, a couple things I wanted to point out is um, I have developed a legend. And so when I, I do little shortcuts, um, rather, rather than, so basically when I see a pink M, it says, memorize this verse, you know, so, and he said, definitely even both times he said, memorize this verse. And so, uh, and so I just draw an M and I color it pink and it catches my eye to know it's big. And so, you know, I'm going to go back and look at those verses and, and do my best to commit them to memory. So anyway, that was just kind of an overview of, of a sketch note. So, you know, doesn't have to be perfect, but just to kind of just challenge you to maybe figure out how to, to put, put some visuals in the title, you know, and uh, maybe continue to develop your, your legend. And, and I would just keep it in the front of your sketchbook and your sketch notebook, um, and then that way, you, if you like, oh, what, what, what am I using for like a to-do list, or I need to call somebody, then all those little icons will be right there in the front of your um, uh, sketch note or sermon sketch notebook, and you'll be ready to go. All right, so okay, let's see what else are we doing here. So the survey, right? Okay. Um, Let's see. So, I've got some paper going from there. Um, somebody made comment like, "How in the world do I get all my inspiration?" And I actually found this. I found this um, huge box of old magazine clippings that I have, and so I'm kind of going through and deciding what to keep, what to take pictures of, what to get rid of. And I just thought, what a perfect. Um, ad for today. This was actually in 2006. I'm not really sure what magazine, but it says June of 2006. So um, would that not be a perfect gift birthday card? You know, if you could draw this and um, then have everything else down here, you know, that people might actually want, but <laughs> just have your have the roll of toilet paper there. I just thought that was just really appropriate for today. So I thought that would make a great birthday card. So, all right. And then, um, all right. So, okay. So here is my Mother's Day card. So, oh, we're going to make a, I am, um, where did it go? There it is. Um, So, are you all seeing? Is my camera's working right right now? Are you have seen a Mother's Day thing? Cause um, looks like my camera. Oh, okay, good, got it. All right. So, what do you think about this? I think my mother will get a chuckle out of this. this is my birth my my Mother's Day card to my mother? She's gonna be ninety on the eighteenth. So we're gonna have a little party for her next week. But I'm gonna give her this for her Mother's Day. So I think she'll get a chuckle out of it. So, um. 
My husband didn't think it was very funny. <laughs> He's sitting right next to me. So, so anyway, um, anyway, so I thought, you know, put it, I love taking letters and making things out of them. And um, my art tends to be, you sort of really have to look at it and stare at it a little bit to get it. And sometimes my humor is lost on people. But anyway, so I thought, you know, got to have the mask. And then all my letters have to be six feet apart, right? And I just thought, I saved my Mother's Day cards. And I thought this would be kind of a fun thing to look back years from now and go, oh, yeah, I remember that Mother's Day. You know, so I got the virus and, of course, the toilet paper. Um, and the H is for sheltering at home. And then I made a Zoom meeting out of the E. We've got little people in the Zoom box. I know you can't see that very well. I don't know why that's... Anyway, you know what? Let me try it. Let me try. Let's see if I've got this. Let me see if I can just put it on the screen. No, nope, that didn't work. Hang on. Let me see if I can... There. Let's try this. All right. Are you seeing that? Is that... Maybe that's better. So anyway, so there's the mask and the virus and the toilet paper and sheltering in place. And there's my little Zoom meeting. And uh, hand sanitizer is my R and then S. I got this idea from my sister because she's like, um, gets her hair colored quite frequently. And she hasn't been able to get her hair colored. She's like, I'm almost all gray. So uh, I thought it would be fun to have a little brown at the end and the rest be gray on the hair on the S. Anyway, so uh, so there's my Mother's Day card. We'll have to see if my mother gets a chuckle out of it. So, all right. Oh, good. I'm glad that's better. So I don't know why that wasn't, wasn't clear. Anyway, so, all right. So there's my Mother's Day card, but let's move on and let's make, um, I'm going to flip it back to this. Um, Let's see. There we go. So I don't know why that is. I think it could be clear. I'm not really sure what's going on with that. I may have to get a different camera, but those are like impossible to find right now. So here is the printable. And um, so I cut one out already to kind of save us some time. And uh, probably also didn't get a color of this, so I'll have to I'll, I'll post mine when it gets to be... Um, when I get it done. So basically you're just going to cut out these dotted lines here, right? Just kind of cut them out. They don't have to be perfect, right? So, and this is a great project for kids. They can do this. So, uh, so once you get that cut out, so you can kind of see I wasn't exactly perfect. Then I'm just going to start folding the half flips back like that, right? So I'm just going to start folding those all back. So I'm just going to go ahead and do that. Nope. All right. All right. So there's one letter, you know, and also if you wanted to fold them on the line and also do that, start making the triangle. So I'm going to go ahead and do this on the next letter. And do that on the next letter. So these just make great boxes. You can put little things in. I'm going to stop. I'm going to go to the chocolate shop and get my mom some caramels because she loves caramels. I personally don't like caramels, but she loves them. So I thought I would get her some chocolate caramels from the chocolate chocolate store here in St. Louis. And then I will put it in the box. And then... Uh, Folding like that, fold like that again. All right. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thanks. I'm glad you like my card. <laughs> you know if that was a little twister or not. So, all right. So there's my box, right? And so this is what it's going to look like. Right. All done. So. Fortunately, M-O-M is good because sometimes if you have a long word, I, like one time I, I spelled love backwards 
So, all right, so there's that. That's what it's going to look like. So, obviously we want to color it before we actually close it up, but I'm just going to show you how to put it together. We're going to take the hole punch, and then we're going to easy for me to do. Oh, there we go. There we go. I'm going to just hole punch all four corners. And there we go. So then I'm going to make sure my corners are folded in. Like that. And then I'm going to take my ribbon. And then I'm just going to kind of string it through. I'm going to go across and then back around. And then that way it's going to keep all the, the ends closed. And again, you may have, this is 24 inches of ribbon, so it may be too long. So, um, then, so, so then I'm going to come over here. I'm going to flip it around. I'm going to go in. I'm going to do the same with this one. I'm going to go in, and then I'm just going to pull it tight. And hopefully that pulls my little box all together. Like that. Right? Kind of goes like that. And then I'm going to tie a little bow like that to keep it all well. There we go. You make sure before you pull that bow that everything's exactly where you want it. All right, and then I could either tie it up like this so it could hang, I could hang it on a doorknob or something, or I could just tie a bow. Like that and maybe that's more appropriate for Mother's Day so I'm probably going to take and color let's see I'm feeling kind of pink today so I'm probably just going to color these um, maybe I need pink and green maybe that wouldn't look good color the bottom parts pink and then the top part of the letter M um, in green and then maybe put another little heart up here and then I've got a little heart box I mean you could say you write mom a little note on the bottom like that you write mom a note on the bottom um, so yeah yes so I'm glad you like this Joan hey Valerie so Okay, I'm putting together some small tree for nursing homes. This works great for candies I got. All right, awesome. It's awesome, awesome. Well, good for you. Thanks for doing that because nursing homes, I think, are just a really hard hit um, with not people not being able to visit and such. So good for you. Thanks for doing that. Do you have a blank template that could be used for any occasion? Yes. Well, I can make one, Joan. For you, Joan, I would make one. Um, so basically you're saying that you don't want anything on here. You just want blank letters. So I can definitely put a blank template out there. That would be easy to do. Right. Right. All right. So I will do that. All right. You could even curl the ribbon. Yes. Okay. All right. Is there anybody got a trick on how to figure out which side of the ribbon to curl? Because I am so... I always do the wrong side and I always think it's it's the side with the ribs but inevitably oh I did it right that time inevitably I always get the wrong side and it just turns out to be long and limp so all right so and especially I guess with the green ribbon that I just have some basic green flares and you know any markers will do or color pencils so, but I would take this base up here and maybe doodle some flowers or maybe do a little border down here. Just do a little, little, well, that one's a little low. Maybe, I can't, maybe that's not a good idea. But anyway, up here you definitely have some space.
to do some more embellishments. So, all right. Yes. All right. So I will post a blank template um, of the box and that way you can use it for any occasion. A brilliant idea, Joan. I will get that done. Awesome. I will try and get that done a little bit later today. All right. So now um, then the next thing I have is let's doodle a Mother's Day card. So um, sneak peek. So here are my icons for Sunday. So don't tell anybody, all right? But you saw it here first. So here's my Mother's Day icons. And um, then I thought maybe we'd also draw some flowers. So um, the present and tulips and balloons. And I love mom and high heels and flowers and a vase. So if there's anything in particular you'd really like to see, that's fine. I'll try and, and do do that. Um, and I didn't get time to... So here's my thoughts. So this is my Christmas bag. So hang on a second. Let me go back there. All right. So this is just a brown paper bag that I have doodled. And this is all for Christmas doodles, right? Um... But you can put some nice tissue in it, and um, that just really makes a really, um, I think, special gift because you took the time to doodle the front, and you're also getting good practice on your doodling skills. So anyway, so if you have a brown paper bag um, or a gift bag of any color, you know, you can, you, if it's slick, you might need like a, there you go, big Sharpie to, do, to doodle on, but um, this might be a great project. Don't tell anybody, but we're getting my mother a microwave for Christmas. So that's why I didn't do one for Mother's Day, because that would be a big bag to put a microwave in. And the reason we're getting my mom a microwave is my sister found one that um, doesn't make any noise. Because my dad sleeps late in the morning, and so my mom will not use the microwave in the morning to heat up coffee or whatever, roll or bun or coffee cake or whatever uh, because she doesn't want to wake him up so we found a microwave that doesn't make any noise and so um, that's what we're getting her but don't tell her so all right so let's go draw um, I have a Mother's Day card let me go back here here we go so we're gonna draw some icons and then I have some we'll do some more flowers and uh, so here's a Mother's Day card I just thought so um, if you want to, we're just going to start with this. And I thought maybe we'd start with some flowers and then we'll work on um, some more Mother's Day icons. So, all right. Um, all right. So the first thing is, you know, a, um, let's get the title done. So I'm just going to use, or actually a Sharpie pen will be fine. So, um, so I went ahead and I found the halfway mark. So, um, you see, I didn't have my scissors here. I just ripped that. So, this is regular paper. But I'm going to find the halfway mark, right? So, um, I think this is five and a half inches. So, this would be two and a half, two, th two and three quarters inches. So, I just draw a uh, pencil line down the middle. And then I found the middle letter of each word. And I put that on the line. So, and then I just wrote it in pencil. So I can come back and use my Sharpie pen, you know, and you can say anything you want. You don't have to say Happy Mother's Day. Something else makes more sense. Best mom ever. Mom, you rock. Who knows? My sister got some flowers from her. She has four children and she got flowers yesterday and it just said, from your favorite child. So... <laughs> Anyway, how do you respond to that? I thought that was pretty funny. She has some very creative children. I'd be curious to know which one actually said it. That's pretty funny. Anyway, so there's Mother's Day, right? And, all right. All right, so I'm going to do two things now. So first thing, I'm just going to draw a box, circle, some kind of shape around that to kind of close it off, right? And then I'm going to take my sharpie, um, sharpie 
and I'm just and this might bleed through so you might have to might be better off to just use the sharpie pen and just go over it two or three times to make a nice bold line because once we put a border on our paper we've sort of defined the space that we're going to um, use and it's not so intimidating so we've already got some marks on the paper you know what and if we mess this up it's only two cents right so I am going to go ahead and erase um, my pencil lines and then we're going to just start drawing some flowers and so I love do you guys know who Mary Inglebreet is she is a local artist in St. Louis and she's if you saw her stuff you know it so in fact I'll, I'll put a link down below of my Pinterest page of her stuff anyway um, let me see if I can find some stuff real quick anyway she's my inspiration for flowers here so um, yeah so there you go so there's Mary so she's actually a local St. Louis artist so I would love to meet her someday but I'm sure you recognize her style but see her flowers are so simple and they're so fun so I thought maybe let's draw some of those flowers today so all right so back to there we go back to this so um, feel free to do it in pencil if that makes sense if you're more comfortable doing it that way and there we go all right um, all right so I'm just gonna start and you can always add some hearts right and just do it and then color it in so actually let's start in pencil um, to draw some of our bigger flowers so maybe I'm just going to start with a circle there and then another circle and then maybe I'm just going to put a couple of little tiny circles there at the end and then we'll draw some big leaves right and then come in draw our lines you can always clean up the lines later all right so there's that all right and then um maybe let's draw put the center of the flower there okay and this is why we're going in pencil because sometimes it's just easier to kind of draw lines all right so we're just going to do loops around it and then we'll just um just do little lines to kind of indicate flowers and actually for this let's just go ahead and draw on the inside again and then maybe we can use contrasting colors like a like an orange in the background and a yellow and a yellow leaf right and then maybe these leaves let's make them like this kind of zigzaggy all right so I'm going to come and I'm just going to zigzag like that. And then we're going to meet in the middle. I'm just going to draw a line at the top. And then let's draw another one. So let's draw a line in the middle. All right. Zigzag. And then up. So I'm starting out and see I'm coming in with my zigzags like that. So when we have overlaps, you can see that so I'm gonna go ahead and ink these in so you can see that I'm gonna go over this leaf that puts this flower on top and this leaf behind and it just helps create depth in your work and interest okay so going to go ahead and ink all that in and ink that second 
layer around it. And then when I come over here and do this flower, then when I draw this leaf, it's going to stop because when you have stop lines, that indicates that this leaf is behind this because this is overlapping. And there you can see that this leaf is behind that. And then again, you'll see that this leaf is going to stop. So this leaf is on top of this leaf. All right, and then I'm just going to draw my little circles here. All right, and then we can erase the lines later. But you can see we can start filling it up. So what are we going to do with this little space in here? So you have several choices. You can um, draw little flowers like this. So draw a little circle. And then actually I'm going to draw my flower bigger. But we're going to squeeze that couple of those in that little, in this little space right here. So if I start there and then... And then maybe these are my filler flowers and maybe these are like a light yellow or a light purple. And then anywhere I have a little space, I'm just going to squeeze those in, color those in, and that's just going to create some balance over the whole um, card. All right. And then if you wanted to add, you know, get very whimsical with your cards and your leaves, you could... You know, we could just put circles in our leaves on one side. We don't have to make our leaves symmetrical. Maybe we could make straight out lines instead of curve or lines on an angle like we did here. Maybe we make them straight just to make them a little more whimsy. All right. So let's make some more flowers. Are we ready to make more flowers? All right, yes. And her calendars are always amazing. I have one every year. All right. How are we doing on time? 37 minutes. All right. Okie doke. Um, let's put some more flowers in. So we can add another one. Maybe let's start over here on the side. And we're just going to make it like that. Just simple, simple. And again, if you wanted to outline to kind of create some space, we could. And then maybe I'm going to come over here. And I'm just going to... So I'm, here's a trick for these kinds of flowers. So here's a couple of things you can do. You could actually draw a circle as a guide to kind of keep all the leaves the same. And then you start by, um, we could go all the way around, but you could also do this. All right. And you can see I, that's not quite in the circle the center, um, but that's all right. I'm going to go ahead and fill in. So do these, do these. Then I'm going to do this on the diagonal and then I'm going to do this one on the diagonal and then I then I can just fill it in see this I can just do a loop right so now I have a, that leaf is behind the big leaves right All right, so maybe that's a bigger space, so I might actually put two there. And again, that's a bigger space, so. All right. second. 
All right, so then we can um, maybe add some lines in the petals, kind of indicate that the petals got some depth to it. All right, it's just not a flat petal. And again, you might want to um, color the leaves on top like maybe a light pink and the ones in the background a darker pink or, or red right so again we can put some I'm gonna make these a little bit longer leaves maybe we should just have a session on just how to draw leaves let me think about that and then maybe I'm gonna do double lines here instead of single and if you look in nature you can see that some leaves have lines on the same side and then some leaves are offset. Okay, probably wouldn't see that on the same plant, but in nature you'll see you'll see some leaves have opposites and then some are offset. So and they're both very interesting. We need a little bit of everything. All right, how are we doing so far? All right, okay, leaves. I'll make a note. Maybe do a leaf class. Okay, all right, so I'm going to put some of those little flowers here. And so again, so let's create this. So I might just start another one there and do that and maybe start another one there and do that maybe start a whole one here so again it's it's just a it's just a, that shape and put a little circle in it and then um, but as you so this flower is clearly under these two this one's on top because it doesn't have any broken lines so that's another way to create depth all right, so anyway, I'm going to fill up my whole spaces here. I guess we're going to put some more leaves here. Um, here's another leaf shape. Just to kind of do it. So we're going to do kind of a half a heart, a half a heart, a half a heart, and I guess maybe I made that a little tall. But anyway, so that's another leaf, kind of maybe oak-ish leaf kind of thing. So, um, I think because that's a big leaf, I'm going to save it and put it over here and maybe just do some smaller leaves, maybe some rounded leaves here on this plant. And maybe I'm going to just put a lot of lines in this one. All right, and then maybe over here, I'm going to come, I'm going to switch back to pencil because I'm going to put a flower here and I'm just going to draw a couple of hearts, I think, and maybe do, so let's see, I've got definitely got some overlapping going on, but I think I'm going to put a flower there. So basically, I'm going to leave that space circle for a flower and then I'm going to put two hearts there and then um, maybe so Mary has a lot of ribbons in her work so maybe let's put a ribbon in here and maybe we don't want to fill it out till later till we get done putting flowers in so let's let's do a ribbon so it's just going to be just make it an S curve and then you're going to come down like that and you're just going to then bring that back and that's how we create a ribbon and then on this back side we're going to come down so um, let's try another one.
So on the outside of the curves, I'm just going to bring a line down and then I'm just going to follow the, this line parallel and then that line parallel like that. And then we can just, in this curve, we can just bring in, we can just bring the lines on the back side of those curves straight down and then we can kind of color those in for depth. All right. Anyway, so um, I'm going to do these last because I think I'm going to do these over flowers. So let's put in some more flowers. So um, let's do this flower. So let's do, how about this flower? So um, I'm going to create, I'm going to do a, I did a cross and I'm going to do a circle and then I'm going to go up a line and then kind of like give it a carnation leaf and then I'm going to give a little space and do another little carnation leaf up and then zigzag down and then I've got a carnation. So let's give it some flower or give it some leaves and then let's draw our hearts in. All right, so let's draw a couple more flowers and then we'll finish this uh, ribbon. So maybe let's draw like a little cluster of, um, well, here's a, here's a nice flower to draw. Um, um, actually, let's go ahead and finish this. And because I just finished that and left that open, um, it might be a good idea to see, here's a mistake. So don't make mistakes. Like I make, let me make the mistake so you don't have to. So I could white that out and then color it in, but I got a feeling then the color right there is going to be a little different. I could take a little piece of paper and stick it in, or I could just um, oh, here's the solution. See, it's a great thing when you make mistakes is, so Mary does a lot of checkerboards. So now I just have my checkerboard being on that line. So I think it'd be better if we did this first and then be the back of it. I'm just going to make it all filled in, shaded. All right, so there's one ribbon on one side and so had I not drawn this in and drawn this first, um, then I could probably color this any color that I wanted, but since I Um, drew those in, then we're just going to go with checked ribbon. And you can actually color in the other color to give it some more color, make it that bright pink or something. So let's see. So one of these needs to be All right, so there you go. So we can just finish filling in the rest. So here's some other flowers. Here are some other flowers. So let's draw maybe another one of these over here. So again, it might be better 
to just do this all in pencil first so you can decide what's going to overlap what. So. And then you can always do anything you want in these big round flowers. Just draw two lines. Here's the way she does roses is she draws a big circle and then she draws a line halfway across and then she comes in and does that right and then she just kind of keeps doing that. They kind of create the, the, the rose closed. Right, and there you have um, the roses. And then, um, you know, if you just wanted to, um, like maybe right here, draw little circles. And then, so basically, here's the. So I'm going to draw a circle, and then I'm going to just draw two lines like that, and then I'm going to draw another circle like that. Oops. So that one's off center. And we can just create a little row of flowers. something like that to kind of fill in those spaces. And I've got some here, I've got a little space here. So I'm just going to fill in little spaces here. Right, I might do the same. Um, maybe put some more of these flowers over here, just, you know, because Drawing some circles within the circles. I don't know why that camera is not very clear. I don't know that that's helping a lot. All right, I gotta work on that. All right, and then you're just gonna draw lots of leaves, fill in the green, right? So. All right, so we are getting down to almost an hour. I like to keep the, uh, these guys to an hour if we can. Um, let me see if there's any other flowers. Um, here's another one that will be fun. So just draw in a circle and another circle around it. And then in this case, we're just gonna create some petals. Right, here's here's another flower. Is so I'm gonna start with small and then I'm gonna in pencil draw around it. And then I'm gonna make my leaves very square. So coming back out, going around the circle, kind of making my leaves a little more pointed and then you can always draw things in the middle so there's another flower and we can always layer flowers and you can kind of overlap so I, I kind of like to do this sometimes so there's a leaf so I'm not going to start down here I'm going to start up here in the middle and that kind of gives the in, in, implication that these leaves are overlapping so there's a flower in itself, right? And then you can add, you can always come back and add like another layer of leaves to kind of give it maybe a dahlia kind of look, right? And then sunflowers, we didn't do sunflowers yet. 
All right, Linda, thanks for coming. Yeah, absolutely catch the card later. Hey, Renee. So totally glad you're here. Totally glad. Um, so let's do a sunflower. And actually, let me just start with me. Let me flip the paper up. So we're going to draw a big center. And then we're going to come in with a pencil and draw another big circle. And you can kind of see that it's not quite even, but that's okay. Sunflowers are not perfect flowers. So again, I'm just going to go kind of that teardrop shape. And I'm going to set my points doing the four sides. And then I'm going to come in. and do another set. And now when I have a space like that, I'm probably going to come in and then draw. I'm going to start filling in the back. So I'm going to come in. I'm going to draw a line up the middle. And I'm going to come in and draw one leaf and then fill in the back. And then you could even, if you wanted, come in and fill it in again with another set behind it if you really wanted to make it um, flowers in depth and again I think sunflower leaves look better if you put two lines on the front so we're just going to finish it and then you know um, the pattern of the of the seeds is very intricate but I tend to just put a grid there and people get it and it looks just fine and you can color the grid in different browns or you could put in a pattern if you wanted to do like a checkerboard. And I'm just doing straight lines. I'm just doing five little straight lines down. All right, so that's that's the way we do a sunflower. I'm not really sure I have room for a sunflower on that, but um, hopefully we've given you lots of ideas. Um, you know, you can always just do flowers with petals, right? And then color it in nice bright colors. And I would keep your color palette mm, maybe for four or five colors kind of related. Maybe one contrasting, like maybe a, a pink and a purple um, as your main flowers. And then green for leaves and maybe a yellow or yellowy orange to contrast and then uh, you can always fill in these these hearts maybe with a pattern like maybe just dots here and then maybe a grid there I love just drawing the grid it's just good practice just to practice your muscle memory to make straight lines and if your lines aren't straight that makes it your grid more interesting so no worries if it's not All right and then we can just start going across and maybe color that in with a pink but something like that and that could be really pretty and then especially if you like it maybe added some pink to to our bit to our ribbon there so all right um what else can i show you is there anything that you would like to know for me to draw from in, uh either well i just knocked my camera there we go anything on this sheet that i can draw for you i would love to see what you guys end up with i'd love to see if you post your final um products anyway cakes we can draw a cake um, and a baby. Um, I'm going to draw a couple of things here. Anyway, so cakes are really simple. They're just squares. So, um, so basically, so if we're doing layer cakes or wedding cakes or big birthday cakes, 
They're just squares, and we give the impression that it's rounded because we put it on a round plate. And see, I have stop lines. So I took and I just drew a partial oval, and um, so we can see that that made it. We put the cake on the plate, and actually, you could actually make that. You really want to put the cake on the plate, make that rounded, but everything else is square. And then we're just going to use half circles to indicate we've got frosting going on in every layer. And of course, you can, there's some crazy cakes out there, so you can find some good inspiration to make your cakes a little more interesting. Right? So you could. Or you could actually put a flower, you know. Real flowers are used quite often in cake decorations. And then, so, I decided what if we had candles that spelled out mom. How about that? So, that could be our Mother's Day cake. Maybe make that, put those in a different color. All right, and let's see what else. Um, balloons tend to be just two circles, but they tend to overlap. So that's why I tend to draw them in pencil. And we're going to put this one first on top. So we're going to close the circle and we're going to come back and just draw the partial circle here. And then you'll see that they end with a little triangle. That's the where you tie the balloon off. All right? And then we're just going to bring our strings down. And we're going to do two loops. And now we've got balloons. All right. Hey Lisa, welcome, and Cynthia, great. So, is there anything else that you would like me to draw? Um, I don't know why my camera keeps stopping. There we go. Um, so anyway, so there's Mother's Day. Anything else on there? Oh, let's draw the baby. The baby's really easy. The baby is just an oval and then we draw a little circle and if we just draw straight lines like that then we have a sleeping baby and then just we're going to draw two curved lines to kind of indicate and actually you can kind of see I actually have the lines more coming off the the face versus being down here a little bit so um, they kind of indicate they're more snuggled. Like that. So, so anyway, so that's an easy way to draw a baby. And I'm going to do a mom banner in this one. We're going to do the banner first, and which is simply a box. And remember, it's always better to do like I do, not like I say, but draw, write the word mom and then draw the box. And then this ribbon is up, not down. So we're going to come up, and then we're going to come. Actually, we're going to draw our heart. So we're going to draw half our heart and make sure that it comes and touches each side. And then we're going to come down and draw the rest of our heart. So let's finish the banner now. So now we're going to draw two lines on either side and a line up and a line up and then a V. And now we've got 
our mom banner. So, and you know what? You could always maybe just draw that heart in pencil first. It's always good to draw in pencil first until you've done it a ton of times. So, all right. So, what else can I draw for you? Or we're over an hour, so I know you guys probably got a ton of things to do on a Friday afternoon. So, um, just I think that we're going to end it there, unless you guys have anything else you want me to draw. And um, thanks so much for joining me. I so appreciate it. And we will have our next session on, oh, there we go, um, May 22nd. So it's a Friday before Memorial Day, but a lot of us won't be going out. So also uh, leave me a comment about what you guys are going to do for Mother's Day. So um, we playing bridge with my mom. So, oh, the heel, the heels. All right, we'll draw that really quick. So I think it all, it's all about this line first. Oh, sorry. It's all about this line first, right? And and go in for a straight line, and then we're going to come down with the heel, and we're going to come up. All right, that's not my best shoe. Maybe this is a little big here. This little gap is a little big. to be curved actually <sighs> let's try it again so so I've kind of got an S right and I'm going to come down and draw the back of the shoe I'm going to come up to create room for the heat for the ankle to go in or the bottom of the foot right and then coming down and then we make it a little bit bigger at the bottom and so we have room for the rest of the foot. So barbecue with the kids. Awesome. Yeah. So I know my one son is stuck in California and probably hasn't been home since February. No, maybe March. Anyway, I haven't seen him since February. And um, yeah, not sure what the other kids are going to do. But I know my sister and I are going to go see my mom. So that's good. Anyway, I hope, I hope you guys have an amazing Mother's Day. So thanks so much for joining, and uh, I will see you guys on the 22nd. And if there's anything in the meantime that I can help you with, be sure and reach out. And um, I will see you next time. You guys have a great Mother's Day. Oh, Joan says her son's coming to visit. All right, you guys take care.